My wife, 35, and I, 36 male, live across the country from my family, and we only visit for weddings, funerals, and other big family-related events. Both my wife and I are deaf. I've never been close with anyone in my family, my grandparents, cousins, aunts, uncles, brother and father, single dad, because they never bothered to look past my disability. Growing up, they only did the bare minimum, fed me, clothed me, and made small talk, but they never actually tried to get to know me or do anything beyond that. They didn't even learn sign language for me. As a result, I can talk and read lips, but am often left out of their conversations. They never bothered to get to know my wife either. They think we're both stupid and incapable of anything just because we can't hear. We're in our 30s and they still treat us like children. We hate it, especially my wife, who has purposefully not visited them since 2017. I have a successful career and so does my wife, and we've been entirely on our own since college. We have a healthy bank account, travel a lot, and are ready to buy a nice house, but we're waiting for the housing market to cool down. Yet, despite all that, my family thinks that my wife family takes care of us, i.e. help out financially, manage our finances, and walks us through everyday tasks, like buying groceries or paying bills. They just won't believe that we're intelligent and competent people who have done well for ourselves all on our own. My older brother's not deaf and is very close with my whole family. Unfortunately, he doesn't have his life together. He works odd jobs, has unstable relationships, and regularly mooches off people. Yet my family still reveres him as a competent person. He's a narcissist who has always treated me poorly, and my family enables his bad behavior. That's another reason I keep them at arm's length. I hope I've given enough context. So now on to the issue. My wife and I have a toddler daughter. When my wife was pregnant, we decided we didn't want any of my family in our daughter's life. It wouldn't be healthy for her to be around people who constantly disrespect her parents. And if she turned out deaf, she didn't. They wouldn't treat her respectfully either. No one in my family keeps in touch with me anyway, so I didn't see a reason to volunteer any information to them. So I never told them about my daughter. We keep her off social media, and I have visited them only once since she was born, but she stayed home with my wife. My brother discovered my daughter's existence a few weeks ago. The whole family is very upset. They blamed my wife because they thought she controlled me, which is not true. They accused me of denying my daughter a family that could have her in many different ways. They may have a point. I'm starting to wonder if my wife and I are selfish for keeping our daughter from a family full of cousins her age because we have our own hangups about them. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. I think you made the right decision and they don't seem worth keeping in contact with. I'm struggling to understand how they're so dense that they don't realize you're a smart and capable person. So often, I think people get the view that deaf people are mentally deficient because they have never met any, but they have known you your whole life and still don't get it. Even with the perfect comparison of your brother, strange. My parents are like this with my brother and me, but I'm not deaf. I have autism. They treat me like I'm an idiot who can't do anything, while my brother who messed around all through school and life is the revered golden child. It's insane. I spent my life trying to get them to like me, but they never will. Had to cut them off, and I've never been happier. OP, keep your daughter away from people who might hurt her, and go no contact correctly this time. Your family is ableist, and they would affect your daughter in a toxic way with it. I'm a little worried. From the way you described your family, they treat you and your wife as if you're incapable of discernment and of being legally autonomous. Your tale gave me bad vibes. Now that they know you have a daughter, I would take steps to protect her, like warning the kindergarten or daycare, and in the future, the school, that they're not allowed to pick up your daughter. That's what I said, too. Talking to a lawyer to be prepared if they go the CPS route and making sure no caretaker will release her to them could be important. Them wanting to raise her differently and thinking OP and his wife can't take care of themselves is alarming. Their lives would speak for themselves, it would be funny if they did go to court with their tales of OP and his wife's incompetence, and then OP lays out their lives. 
then they would look like the fools they are and dash any hopes of any visitation in the future. But I agree. Document everything and ensure all your affairs are in order. My wife and I, both early 30s, have two sons, Theo Pretween and Max Toddler, and we're also raising her niece, Lily, kindergartner, currently because her parents are in rehab. I'm a stay-at-home dad and my wife works. When we had our oldest, my wife was a stay-at-home mom for over a year, and then she decided to return to work. She makes more money than I do, and I was delighted to spend time with our son, so I agreed to stay home, take care of our son, and do the housekeeping. After we had Max, the agreement stayed in place. My wife still wanted to work. My wife has severe anxiety, and being at home with the kids all day would really impact her mental health. Her niece came to live with us eight months ago, and it's looking like she'll stay for much longer, maybe even permanently. She's a lovely girl but was raised by bad parents, so her routine was non-existent. However, I made a solid routine in our house for her, as in chores, sleep schedule, etc., and she's adjusted really well. My wife works 8 to 5. The kids wake up at 7. Then my wife takes the oldest to school, and I'm home with the other two. The oldest goes to bed at 8 p.m., the niece at 7.30 p.m., and the youngest at 7. A few days ago, my wife told me her niece wants us to move her sleep hour to 8, the same as our Theo. I told her no because Theo has more chores because he's older and uses the 30 minutes extra he has at night to watch his favorite cartoon without his little brother and cousin interrupting him constantly, which they do because, well, he's the big brother. My wife got angry with me and said I was treating her niece unfairly because she wasn't mine. I said, that's ridiculous. She told me we might someday adopt her and I need to treat her like my own. I told her I do treat her like my own and a regular sleep schedule is what I maintain for all my children. It's not like Theo can stay up later than agreed or Max can skip naps just because he hates sleep. She called me a biased father and an idiot for putting my kids before her niece. I told her if I'm such a horrible father, she's welcome to be a stay-at-home mom and deal with the kids while I go to work. She was really hurt. Am I the idiot here? Not the idiot. It sounds like you have valid reasons. It's normal for kids to campaign for later bedtimes. It's also normal for parents to say no. I don't know your wife's problem, but the kindergartner doesn't need to stay up any later than they are right now. The wife's problem is that she already has anxiety that is being exacerbated by her sibling, who is battling addiction issues, and by taking over the parenting of the niece, I agree that she is the idiot in this situation, but she probably isn't intending to be malicious, unless she has a habit of hurling insults outside of this, which OP didn't indicate. However, she needs to rein herself in and develop better coping skills and would be a real idiot if she didn't. I also wonder if there might not be a bit of a gender bias. OP and his wife had two boys, and now his wife has a little girl with who she wants to bond, and the wife feels that the little girl shouldn't be treated like the two boys. Then again, I've seen this with children whose parents are less than ideal. The guardians bend over backward to please them because they feel sorry for those children. I think it's deaf the latter for sure. This is not an issue with your choices. Your wife is not demanding you adjust anyone else's schedule. She's trying to guilt and shame you into giving in to her demands is discussing how she feels about her niece and why she might be favoring her something that could be beneficial here? For example, does it make her feel better to be the one who rescues her niece? Why is it so hard for her to accept no as an answer? Is she struggling with what conversation she might have with her niece if she does? Strong personal issues signal here from her. Either way, kudos on taking on more than you bargained for and taking that commitment and responsibility seriously. I'm sure you're both stressed out by this big life change, as is your niece, so it would be beneficial to get in touch with a therapist to help you guys navigate this new normal. I was married for nine years to my ex-wife. We were childhood sweethearts who married out of high school and had two kids together. Then she got pregnant for the third time, which was a surprise. We were done with having children. I had a vasectomy to ensure we wouldn't have more children. I went to my doctor, who confirmed I could not have gotten her pregnant. She then confessed 
She'd been having an affair, but didn't want our marriage to end. I told her I would not stay with her after she betrayed me, and I wouldn't raise the child she made with another man. When we separated, she moved in with her child's father. When we divorced, she got engaged and popped out another child with him. I should mention I paid for a DNA test on her third child to be 100% sure because I'll never turn my back on my children. DNA proved her child was not mine. He left her high and dry with nothing. She had only a small family, her mom and sister, who helped her out, but a clear message was sent that I should step up and be a father to her other children. I said, no way. Our sons together are now tweens. Her other children are toddler and pre-K. X struggles financially and has repeatedly pleaded with me to be a presence in her younger children's lives over the last few years. They don't have any active male adult figures in their lives, and I understand that she wants that for them, but I have no desire to be that. So I choose not to think about those kids unless I have to, i.e. when I'm going to be around them to make sure I can at least not be an idiot. They are my boy's siblings after all. The older of the two is having a birthday soon, and I've been asked if I could buy some gifts and show up at a birthday party for her, the child. I've refused. I said it's on my ex. So now her mom and sister are coming after me for not stepping up and showing my boys what a real man and real father are. They say I'm damaging my boys, ruining their childhood and future by not displaying true compassion and love and embracing their siblings. I have also been accused of causing a rift because the boys call them half-siblings versus just siblings. They say I allowed that divide to happen. They also say two innocent children have very little and see their brothers with so much more, possessions, family, quality experiences. And while they're little now, the oldest is about to get to an age where this stuff starts to stick. My ex heard about the exchange with her mom and sister and called me an idiot for punishing her kids instead of her. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. She was unfaithful and now expects you to pick up the pieces? That's comical. Look after your biological sons and yourself. She got herself into this mess. No one else. Once your kids are older, you can explain what happened and why things seem different for their siblings. But for now, you're a great father to your kids. Why are they punishing the man taking care of his kids instead of the one who bailed? They should invest their energy in hounding the kid's actual father for child support. But no, let's try to take advantage of the guy she betrayed. What is it with cheaters wanting everyone to play happy families with their affair kids? Talk about having your cake and eating it too. The money you spend on kids that aren't yours is money you can't spend on your kids. This sucks for the two younger kids who've done nothing wrong, but that's something their mother should have considered before cheating on you. I, 30 female, am eight months pregnant with my first child. It's a boy. My husband, Rodrigo, 35, died in the army three months ago. My sister, Kayla, 28, just gave birth five days ago. She and her boyfriend live with our parents, and I temporarily moved in as well. It's a huge house because I hated being alone, and my parents have been very supportive. We were going to name the baby Alex, and I'm still going with that. Plus, Rodrigo has a middle name. My sister never discussed baby names with the family or me. She always said she loves Hispanic names. We are white Americans and my husband is Mexican. Yesterday, she returned home with the baby and introduced us all to baby Rodrigo. I started crying and told her. That was awful of her. My mother comforted me and told my sister she was way out of line with the name. Sister says I don't own the name. It's a common name where we live. It is. And I'm going with Rodrigo as a middle name anyway, not a first. So it won't be a problem. I told my sister to change the name to anything else. She says I'm an idiot for suggesting she changes her kid's identity. Am I the idiot? Dear God, you are not the idiot. Is she really going to say that's his identity while he's an infant? I think my eyes just nearly rolled out of my head. If she refuses to change it, I tell her to go kick rocks and go no contact. I am so sorry for your loss. My heart goes out to you. While you can't own a name, it still feels wrong to name your kid the same name as your sister's dead husband without talking about it first, especially if he died so recently. 
Maybe if she talked to you about it first, you'd feel differently. Do yourself a favor and find your place before giving birth and move out. Wow, not a trace of sympathy in your sister, huh? Your sister knows what she's doing. She's not a very good person. You can't force her. She probably won't cave because she already knew it would hurt you and did it anyway. If that's her attitude, you and your baby would be better off going no contact with her. Also, if I were your parent, I would kick her out of the house for being insensitive. My nephew's birthday dinner was at Outback Steakhouse, and my autistic daughter has many food sensitivities. So I looked up the menu and asked if she could eat anything on it. She said no and asked if she could prepare her food. I said she could and asked her to keep it simple. She said she would make a hummus and pesto sandwich and apple slices. I said that was fine. I put the food in Ziploc bags in my purse. At the dinner, everything was fine at first. We all ordered drinks. I got a Coke and my daughter got an Arnold Palmer. When it was time to order food, I got the steakhouse salad and asked for an extra plate and my daughter very non-obtrusively declined to order. She was so quiet and calm that the rest of the party didn't notice. When the fruit arrived, I quickly put my daughter's stuff on my extra plate and slid it over to her. Since she was eating off the restaurant's plates, it was hardly noticeable that she wasn't eating restaurant food. My sister, however, saw what I did and got angry. She told me to order my daughter an entree. I said she was okay. Then sister got louder and drew the whole table's attention. I tried to divert attention by asking my brother-in-law's mom about her garden. Still, my sister got even louder and told me to stop making a scene and that this was her son's special day and my daughter wasn't going to be the center of attention on her son's special day and I needed to stop acting like the world revolved around her. She got so upset that her face turned red and a waitress came over and asked our table to quiet down because we were disturbing other tables. So I just collected my daughter and left. My sister texted me a whole bunch of abuse and a Venmo request for $50. I know a salad. I didn't even get to eat most of it and two soft drinks weren't $50. So I sent her $20 instead. She's mad as heck. My brother said that my sister was tired of it being always something with my daughter. And even though my sister overreacted, I instigated and should have left her home if she couldn't handle a restaurant. But to my mind, she did handle the restaurant. She didn't make a scene. She didn't eat their food. So why couldn't everyone just eat their food and ignore my daughters? Not the idiot. It wasn't a scene until your sister made it a scene. And she sounds unhinged. You literally did nothing wrong or anything to steal the spotlight from your nephew. Your sister did that all on her own. You and your daughter found an unobtrusive way for her to be involved in a family outing. Kudos to you for that. If the restaurant didn't have an issue with you bringing outside food, I don't understand your sister's reaction. Wow, just wow. Mom, kudos to you for handling this in a great way. Your sister, on the other hand, well, it wasn't about her son. It was about herself and control, putting on a show for everyone else. Not sure how your daughter and nephew are, but neither need to be exposed to this toxicity at any age. Everyone's the idiot here. I'm wondering if we're missing some info. That's a way over the top reaction to something. Does nephew get overshadowed at other family gatherings? Was your invite a pressure invite from your family? Do your parents spend equal time on both kids? OP may not even know that this is happening. Your parents may be unintentionally doing this and it's easier for your sister to blame you. It's worth a calm and grown up discussion about why she lost it.